that grew up loving baseball, playing shortstop, wanting to be the best at what I do, has a fresh vision for wanting to be that again. And I hope as you kind of walk through those gates out to Roadrunner Field, those illustrious gates, right? Big time baseball field out there, right? Okay? That old location of your heart, what made your heart beat fast for playing this game at five years old is the same thing that's going to make your heart beat fast when you walk through those gates. There should be a fresh vision and a fresh look in your eye and in your heart that you want to be the best. Bottom line. And in this old location, there is a fresh vision. And I was thinking about a fresh vision. I was, I was reading, uh, reading in my Bible and thinking about you know maybe a story to relate to you guys. And it comes out of the Old Testament. And it's in the book of Nehemiah. And the book of Nehemiah isn't a place I always surf through the Bible. I don't go there, all right? It's probably the cleanest pages in this book, right? Because I haven't gone there. It's way back in the Old Testament. It's usually around page 400. If you want to get your Bible out and read through it, all right? It's between Ezra and Esther, all right? So it's just a book that's kind of tucked back in there, but it's got a fresh story in it that I want to tell you. And I want to tell you the story of Nehemiah rebuilding the walls that had been torn down. And it's a great story. And Nehemiah, Nehemiah was a guy who was a cupbearer to the king. He was a servant of a king. King uh, Artaxerxes, I don't even know how to say his name just right. Artaxerxes was this king over this uh, land of Susa. It had fortified walls. It was this big time city in present day Iran. Alright, here's this big time fortified city. And here's this lowly little servant guy to the king, the cupbearer to the king, right? And one day, uh, Nehemiah's brothers come back from his homeland, Jerusalem, and deliver this message to Nehemiah. And then the message was very simple, and it said this, it said, the Jewish people had been scattered, that was, that was, those were his peeps, those were his people, right? They had been scattered about. Jerusalem had been inhabited by Samaritans, people that were strangers to the Jews, right? And the walls of the city had been torn down. This great fortified city, the gates had been burned, the walls had been busted, they had been flattened to the ground, and now the city was just opened up for anyone to travel through. And I, you know, as I sit there and think about that story, I think of maybe a Haitian, a Haitian that gets the news, a Haitian that's living in America, hey, a major earthquake just hit Haiti. And I think about maybe the gravity of what Nehemiah just took in. Like, really? Where I grew up? My ancestors are buried? Where I am from? It's obliterated. It's now a place that people can just come walk in and do whatever. And I can just think about being a Haitian and having that earthquake just a year or two ago. And witnessing it with my own eye on television and the devastation of walls of stones, of bricks, of things that hands had made flattened to the earth. At this moment, Nehemiah 1.4, Nehemiah says, says upon hearing this news, When I heard these words, I sat down and wept. I mourned for, for a number of days. I fasted and prayed before God. And I would think if you're a praying man or you're not, when you saw September 11th, when you saw Katrina hit New Orleans, when you saw Haiti fall to the ground, you become a praying man really fast. And his response is a natural response to a tough moment. His response is that, hey, I'm going to a higher place. I don't have it within my grasp or my ability to just erect these walls back up and let my people walk back in. He goes into a more lengthy prayer, spilling his heart out, asking for a fresh start, asking God to give him strength, and he even asks for success. God, give me success and compassion on my life that I might be the man that walks back into Jerusalem and I'm the one who helps rebuild these walls. And like the entry points down Edward Jimenez and down Walter Brennan, an old location in Nehemiah's heart. All right, his homeland, his people, his walls, everything he knew had a fresh vision. 
fresh vision written across his heart. And that fresh vision was to restore his homeland and to rebuild the walls. Rebuild the walls. And when I read the immediate response of Nehemiah to crisis, I think of a story of one of the September 11 stories, great stories that came out of there, but one of a man by the name of Daniel Rodriguez. He was a man who had studied music as a kid, but as an adult he took on a more serious work as a New York City police officer. Obviously when these attacks happened, many of his buddies uh, were killed in the line of duty. Firemen he knew that perished in the attacks. But as these funerals began to arise, all of his buddies in the police department knew Daniel Rodriguez could sing. He was the kid who had the singing lessons, and he was the guy who used to sing around the office or sing out on duty or in the car going, he used to be the guy who sang. So he started to get invited to sing at these funerals, right? And after that, his tenor voice began to make an impact, and the Yankees called. And I don't know if you remember what God Bless America sounded like or the national anthem sounded like in 2011, but for me, at, at 31 years old, it was like a song I had never heard before. It was like feeling something I had never... I mean, your pride in your country swelled up when you heard someone with a beautiful voice rise up and sing a song, God Bless America, the national anthem. And here's this man who was just a cop shoulder to shoulder with his buddies in the line of duty and watching his buddies get torn down, families destroyed, and here's this man singing at Yankee Stadium, God bless America, the White House calls. And then the greatest Latin tenor in the world, Placido Dominguez, I don't know who this guy is, but Placido, he calls up Daniel Rodriguez, hey man, I want you to study music with me. I want you to make albums with me. And now to packed audiences and albums in his past over the last nine years, he is no longer just a cop. He's the singing cop. He's the guy who came out of September 11th and made something very tragic, something beautiful. When I hear the beginnings of Nehemiah's story, and I hear the prayer, and when I hear the story of Daniel Rodriguez, the singing cop, I know that something tragic can become something beautiful. And what rises from the rubble is a question. And what rises from the rubble that when I stare in the, mem the mirror and I see this question, and hopefully you, you will hear this question, what do I want to be?